All right. Any questions about what we had at the, uh, anything that you want to know about the stuff that we did at the first half of the semester? Any questions? Major questions. Yes. Set an element of an array to null. null to zero, yeah. But, um, the way you're saying it, if you talk about in the declaration of the prototype, are you talking about default arguments? So you can ignore an argument. Yeah, yeah. No, that's only C++. That's one of the side effects of object orientation. Okay. Yes. We're going to learn that next semester, OP244. OK? Yes. All right. What else? Really? Can you go through the pointers? Pointers? I can just bring back the slides up and go through it one more time, exactly as the slides talk about to kind of refresh your mind. You want me to do that? You want me to kind of ref go back through the slides as we've talked about? Mm. All right. All right, so I'm going to sound like a broken record here now and go through this uh, one more time. So again, memory, an array of characters or bytes, back to back, starting from zero in memory and going up to whatever that you can see. Are we okay with that? That's what is it. So that's how the memory is. It's essentially an array of characters because it's an array of characters we can assume that each character in memory, each byte in memory has an index. So essentially, mem0 is the first one that you have in memory, and mem100 is the hundredth byte in memory. This index is called the address of the memory. Okay? So when you want to refer to certain byte or character in memory, you use this one. Now, whenever you create a variable, automatically, uh, the compiler asks the operating system to place that variable somewhere in memory. So when you say int var, it actually occupies a space for your integer and puts it right over there so you can actually go in there. And uh, uh, without knowing what the address is, you can simply go to that place and uh, uh, put stuff in it. So you say var is set to 55. And the same thing with a double. So if you actually say double variable I want, it knows double needs eight characters, so it occupies somewhere else in memory, and that's what's going to be. When you set stuff to values, you don't need to, to variables, you don't need to know where, what the address is, because the compiler knows where it is, the system knows where it is. When you say var is 98765, it puts it exactly where it is. Essentially, the name of the variable is the handle of the memory is the representative, or it's a representation of where your variable is in memory. And it works the exact same way because you actually mentioned what is the type of the variable. Whenever you state what the value is, it knows exactly how many bytes it has to use to put the thing in. So it uses eight bytes for a double, four bytes for an integer if it's a character, one byte for a character, or it's a short integer, two bytes for a short integer. Okay? That's the obvious part. Now, if we, uh, uh, if we actually want to do this manually, if you want to say, okay, I don't want compiler to get involved with this thing, I want to use the address of the variable to put stuff in it. Why? Because I'm crazy and I want to create trouble for myself. Okay? So I want to create some kind of a variable who's capable of holding the address of the variable so I can put stuff in it using the address of the variable. Instead of saying, let's go to Fardad's place, I'm going to say go to, I don't know, whatever is, to Rota Crescent, something like that, okay? So instead of going to Fardad's place, I'm going to ask for his address and go there, okay? I know Fardad, I don't know, like, how many of you actually knows what is the address of your sister? You don't know, right? You know, you know. Your best friend, whatever. Okay, you don't know what their address does. You just know where their house is, uh, house is. So you just go to their place. And if you want to ask someone else to go there, you can't say go to Jack's. They don't know who's Jack. You have to say go to this address. Okay, that's what we want to do. So we want to have a place to hold the address. And because the address's job is to point to that place, we call that a pointer. So pointer PDR 
is actually a variable somewhere in memory like all the other ones, but the difference is that the pointer that we have will actually hold an address, not a value. So I put 102 over there in that PTR. When I put 102 in that PTR, that PTR is going to point where? To address 102. Does address 102 belong to me? No, it belongs to someone else. I don't know who, but it doesn't belong to me. I just put some address in there. Putting some address on an envelope that you don't know whose address it is is a crazy thing because the, 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 your mail is going to go to someone that you don't know, right? It's the exact same thing. So to be more precise, I have to put the address of things that I have. So if my variable is in what address 108, I have to put 108 in PTR so it actually points to the place that I have my variable in. Problem is, I have no way of knowing what is the address of var because var is just a name. For that, we have a, an operator we call address of. So I can say PTR is equal to address of var. So every single time my program runs, the address is going to change. I do not care. The address is going to get extracted, put in PTR. Therefore, PTR actually points to the address of the variable that I created. <clears throat> and therefore, when I actually say target of PTR is 2345, it goes to where PTR is pointing, that is address 108, and puts that one right in there. And that's how pointers work, okay? Remotely accessing something without using their names, okay? And we would, and if we print the variable, the value that's going to get printed is the value over there. If I print the target of the pointer, again, the value is going to get printed, which is very fine. That's exactly what I want, remotely accessing the value. If I print the pointer itself, the address will be displayed, that is 108, not the target of, because, what, because now I'm treating pointer, the PTR variable, as a regular variable, not as a pointer. I'm, I'm asking it to print its content. So I wish that I could do the same thing with the double variable, but the problem is that when you actually think about the design that you made, you will see that that pointer thingy is not a right thing to mention because if I just say PTR is address of the var, there is absolutely no way later on to use the PTR to see what the target is. So <clears throat> if I actually mention target of PTR is set to certain value from PTR by itself, I have no indication what the target is. I don't know if this thing is supposed to be put in 8 bytes or this thing is supposed to be put in 2 bytes. We just did the exact same thing for an integer, right? And that was only 4 bytes. So how can it know what the target is? So the design we have done is flawed. It's bad. We can't do it. This is not right. And the target at the target of the pointer is not known, and therefore we can't do this. Because of this fact, we have to go back and fix our design. Instead of just creating a pointer, we have to mention what type of a thing is sitting at the target of this pointer. We should say integer pointer PTR. Therefore, PTR can only hold the address of integers and nothing else. Okay? It can hold an address of different things, but they all have to be integers. Therefore, when we go through all the things that we have done and we put the address and everything, everything's going to work nicely because every time I am accessing the target of PTR, because PTR itself is designed to be an integer pointer, it knows how it has to, it has to deal with the target. And now I can actually do the exact same thing with a pointer of double. So I can say double pointer DPTR. And DPTR is a new pointer now somewhere in memory. Please note that the DPTR and PTR are both the same size. You see that? Because they're both addresses. It's the target that is the difference. That is a different thing. The pointers by themselves, they are all four bytes because they just hold index of a, of a, of a byte in memory. They don't need to change sizes. They are the same thing. Now, if I actually 
mention that the address of the DVAR goes to DPTR, the address goes there, now I can access all the values, and all the things happen exactly like the other one, and life is beautiful, and now I created the pointer. Okay? And then we mentioned that what I created over here is a hoax. This is a fake thing. We do not have something like this actually as pointers. What we actually have at pointers is, 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 where did I put it? There you go. This, which means, sorry, I have to bring this in. Can somebody close that door, please? And I can't, for some reason, I cannot access the, let me pause this. Instead of saying the word pointer, we actually put an asterisk. Instead of saying address of, we put uh, ampersand. Instead of saying target of, we say asterisk. Therefore, it is the exact same thing as the other one. So if I bring the fake pointer thingy up, all right, and split the window, And look at the code at left and right. So when you say integer pointer PTR, you put an asterisk instead of this. But remember, asterisk belongs to the type. Int asterisk together. You have to say integer pointer, no matter how they, you have, you've seen it written. If they do it like this, again, remember, it is integer pointer. Asterisk belongs to the type, not to the variable. Because it's a free format language, you can do it either way. Ampersand means address of, and asterisk means target of. So you say target of PTR, you put asterisk PTR, and you always read that as asterisk. Remember, when the asterisk doesn't make sense, it means target of. When the asterisk doesn't make sense, it means target of. When it makes sense, it means multiplication. Remember that? Okay? All right. And when you have it after the type, it means a type pointer. All right? That was the review for the pointer. Are we okay? All right. So let's close that one up. And go back to today's topic. So we are talking about functions, arrays, structures, and all those good stuff. All right. Let me pause. Okay, so arrays and functions, structures and functions, and see how they work. Okay, structures and functions, no problem. You should not. We should not even even have any specific lecture for it. It's it just all come to sense when you think about it. When you have any type of structure. Anything that you have as type of structure, think about it as a regular variable and deal with it with function as you did with the other stuff. Okay? Let's say, let's put it this way. Let's say I have a function that draws a bar. I have a function that draws a bar, okay? Which I'm going to actually give information to it, and it draws a line to the number of characters that I want. And I'm going to call that a bar, OK? So if I want to write a function that draws a bar, what do I need to do? I want to print certain characters, right? And I want to mention how many are they. So that's what a bar is. So essentially, I want to do this. This is a bar now. And how many characters I have? I have 25. I don't know if it's 25. Let's say it's 25. OK. So, so if I want to I wanna write a program that does that, how do I do it? I write it like this. So first of all, it's supposed to draw a bar. It doesn't need to give me anything. So it doesn't need to return anything. So I'm going to call it void, which reminds me, tomorrow you have a quiz on the functions, not the functions and structures, but functions. OK, remember that? OK. 
But, but remember the functions, not remember the quiz. Remember the functions, you're going to have a quiz on it, okay? So, so I'm going to have some very simple questions about functions to see if actually you... Anyway, so I want to create a function that draws a bar. So I'm going to call that bar, okay? Now, the bar function is supposed to get two things from me. First, a character with which it's supposed to print the bar. So we don't know what, how they, they want to use pluses, they want to use dashes, they want to use underlines, they want to use the assignment operator. What they want to use, we don't know. So that's the first thing. So I'm going to call that character, what do I call it? Fill? What does it fill it with? Okay. So what the bar is filled in with. So I'm going to call it character fill. And the other one is I'm going to call it, call it the length. So what is a good thing for length? An integer. So I'm going to call it int length. OK? So that's the prototype of my function. You should be able to do this in a second for any functions. OK? For example, I want to write a function that validates a social security number to see if the person has good credit. OK? Tell me the prototype for it. You don't need to know how to write it. You just have to use your imagination and do a prototype for it. OK, I want a person, I want to check a person to see if he has good credit. OK, so it has to either tell me if it has good credit or bad credit. So what should the function return? Good or bad? What is the result? Good or bad? What does it mean, good or bad? One or zero. What does it mean, one or zero? What well, Boolean? We don't have Boolean in integer, bad people. It's an integer. It returns an integer, a one and zero, right? So this is going to be int. So it's going to be int, OK? Good credit, right? It's good credit. So it's going to return one. If it's good credit, it's going to return zero. If it's bad credit, OK? Now I want to give it something off the person. If you want to check to see if you have good credit or not, what do you give to the bank? Your? Social insurance number, what is that? A it's an integer number. It's a bit of a long integer, right? It's a big one, right? So let's just put long. I don't know. So I'm just going to so I'm going to say long social insurance number. Done. I have written the function. Do I know how to write the function? No, I don't. Because I have to write a function over there through the network, connect to, I don't know, Equifax or whatever the service is and pass the thing and authenticate myself as a valid thing, ask them to check the thing and they're going to give me something and I'm going to do something, I'm going to return true or false. How do I do it? I don't know. Do I know what the prototype needs to be? Yes. That's a good system analyst. A good system analyst knows how the functions are supposed to be, how, what it happens in the guts of the function. He doesn't care. He's going to hire the person who can do it. All you need to know is the how, how the function looks like, what the functions look like, OK? Now, another thing. I want to write a function that sends me, I'm just come, coming up with crap, for heaven's sake. Oh, whoop, beep. OK, should have said beep over there. Uh, anyways, I'm just coming up with stuff. I don't know. Um, I want to write a function that gets the model number of a computer or the, the SKU number of a product and tells me what the price is. So I'm fetching the price of an item in the inventory. OK? Or oh, SKU, or we can call it, what do we call it? What is it? Pardon me? Yeah, we can't call UPC is the universal thing. SKU is within the company. So whichever, I don't know. We'll call it SKU, right? So if I want to write that function, that function is supposed to give me a price. What is a good value? What is a good type for a price? Double. double. Integer, double, depending on how you design. Let's call it a double. So now I'm going to call it double. OK, what is it going to do? What is, what is the function doing? Check the price or check the number? No, no. The, the soap, don't ask. You are not a system analyst. You know why? Because you just thought how the function is supposed to work. You're not supposed to think that way. You're supposed to think, what do you need the function to do for you? You are looking for an employee to see how the employee is supposed to. What do you want to do? You want to hire somebody to clean up the table. 
All you need to do to be able to ask the person to clean the table. How the table is cleaned is not your responsibility. Remember that. At the stage of design, you just write what the function is supposed to do. You don't care what's happening inside. So my function is supposed to get the price of an item in the inventory. Now tell me, what should be the name of the, 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 the function? Find price. Ta-da! You don't have to be a, like, come up with something. Find price, check price, get price, whatever. So find price, OK? What do I have to pass to it? Uh, it's integer. SKU number is an integer? OK, an integer. So I'm going to call it int SKU. Done. I've written the function. Do I know how it works? No. What is it supposed to do? It's supposed to get the SKU, go into the database, connect to the database, do a search, see which one has the SKU, get the price, and again, do I know how to do it? No. I want to write the prototype, and that's my job. Remember that. That's the first stage of programming. It comes, everything else comes later. That, if you do like that, you can write programs like that quickly. Because as soon as you think something is troublesome and you don't know how to do it, you procrastinate. You immediately create a function out of imagination, you put the prototype out there and insert a function. You think about that later. Finish your program, then your pro problem becomes something smaller. You have to only think about how that function works. All right? Going back to bar fill thingy that I wanted to say. All right? So I want to print the bar. Now I have written the prototype. Down here I'm going to actually write the function. Okay? I don't like Big variable names, so I'm going to call this character ch in here. And in here, I'm going to call it len. There you go. Do they have to be the same? No. The prototype must have proper name for the variables because people see the prototype. From the prototype, they have to guess how the function works. If I put over there a and b, they don't know what the heck is a ch and what the heck is, a, is an integer. But when you put proper name for the arguments in a, in a, in a prototype, the person who actually looks at the prototype can guess what the thing, how the function works. Okay, so bar ch and len. What do I do? I create an integer, and I say four. I set to zero. I less than len. I plus plus. And I'm going to say simply put char. By the way, put char is a short version of percent c with the integer. Okay, I'm going to say put char ch. I'm just putting care, which means essentially this means printf percent %c and ch. OK? So put care, ch. And then after the characters are put one by one, at the end I'm going to say put care backslash n. Go to new line, which essentially means printf backslash n. OK? There you go. I have written the function. Now I'm going to test it. So to test the function, I'm going to say, mm, uh, anyways, printf, uh, sorry, 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 I'm going to say bar, uh, let's say with the assignment operator, I'm going to put uh, 14 of them. And the next one, I'm going to put 70 of them. But the 70 that I'm going to put are going to be with dash. And I'm going to run the program, and three years later, four years later, five years later, I will see that the program runs with two bars. Are we okay with this? One is a bar with, uh, with assignment operator, 14 of them, and the other one is with dash, 70 of them. Are we okay with this? Anybody have any problem with this function of mine? No? no? Okay. If I want to have a more sophisticated test to see how it works, I can actually write something else like this. Int i, 4i set to 1, i less than, uh, 20, and i plus plus. I'm going to say bar with, let's say, plus sign, and in here, I'm going to put i multiplied by 2. OK? Now if I run this beautiful program of mine, what happened? What did I do?
There we go, one more time. There we go. Now I've written this one. Okay, so it prints more, goes from 2 up to 40 because I have 20 and it's a total of 20 lines. Right? Are we okay with this? So my bar works properly. Any problem down to here? Any question one? Any questions two? Questions three? Pardon me? I want to make a permanent picture doing this. Okay, sure. Anyway, <laughs> do whatever you like in your own time. <laughs> All right. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna continue working on this. Don't worry. Okay, so that's my bar thingy, right? Are we okay with this bar thingy right now? Do we understand how bar works? Everyone? People with cell phone looking at them? Are we okay? <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's save this. So I'm gonna say uh, zero one bad bar. Why is it bad? Because I want to write a better one. It's not bad, really, but just want to. Now I want to write as a programmer. What is a bar? A bar is one entity, right? A bar is one entity. There are two things. Why am I passing two things for a bar? When I say bar, there is one entity. So I should create one entity, one package called bar that has two specifications. One is the filling, and the other one is the length of the bar, right? So instead of writing this program of mine, I'm going to actually write a structure for it. So I'm going to say struct bar, okay? And in that structure, I'm going to put over here character filling, and the other one is integer length. Are we okay with this? Beautiful. Now when I want to actually draw a bar, I'm not going to call it bar anymore. I'm going to actually call it draw bar. And what do I pass to this thing? So my function, now the situation changed. I want to write a function that draws a bar, right? But I already have an entity called bar. So I don't need to pass the filling and the integer. I pass it only one thing. And what is that one thing? It's a bar. So I'm going to say pass it struct bar b. Okay? Are we okay with this? Now when I'm writing this code in here, I'm going to write struct bar b. Coincidentally, I put the same name. And now in here, I'm going to say i less than b dot length. And in here, it's going to be put b dot filling. It's essentially the same thing, right? It just is more organized and it looks better. Okay? Now bar is an entity. Okay? So now in here, instead of having something like that, I can create three different types of bar. Okay? I can create three different types of bar. So I'm going to say struct bar br3. All right, so I'm going to create three bars for those people who didn't get mark on initializing the thing. Okay, I have three bars over here, so I need three bars. The first one is with assignment, and it's 14. And the second one, and the second one is, what is that one? Uh, the second one is minus sign and 70, right? And the last one starts from, it's with plus, and starts from 2, correct? Right? Because that's the first thing that we do. It starts from 2, right? So what I'm going to do over here is this. This one, I'm going to print BR0. That's the first one. This one, I'm going to create BR1. Correct? And for the last one, I'm going to, and this is not bar, it's draw bar. Okay? <laughs> and this one is going to print BR2, correct? 
but I gotta make sure as soon as I pass that one, I'm gonna say br2 dot length plus equal to. So I'm adding two to the length as I print. So I go to the next one, the next one, the next one. Are we okay with this? Any problem down to here? Are we okay? So now, as I told you, it doesn't, should not make any difference. If you know how to pass arguments to a function, you can pass a structure to a function. It does not make any difference. Are we okay? Now, if I run this beautiful program of mine, the outcome is going to be exactly the same. Absolutely no difference, but it's done using a structure. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Are we okay three? Yes. So, so, okay. Now, what if I want to get the information of a bar from user? I want the user to actually enter a bar. So I want to say, okay, uh, what, do you, what is the filling of the bar? You're going to say it's this. And then I'm going to say, what is the length? It's going to say that. And I'm going to show the bar for them. Okay? So if I want to get bar specs, if I want to do that, what should the function be? My function should give me a bar, right? So that function should return a bar. So it's going to be struct bar. I'm going to call it get bar. Does it receive anything from other functions? No. Does it receive anything from other functions? No. no, it receives it from the user, not the functions, right? So I'm going to make it void. Whoops, sorry about that. So I'm going to make it a void. Now I can come down here and write the function. Get bar. Again, whenever your function is returning something, First create it and return it and then start coding. So if I'm creating a if I'm returning a struct bar, the golden rule is to create struct bar uh, br and immediately say return br and then start coding. What do you want that bar to be? All functions who return something, they create the function and return them for our knowledge. Later on, you're going to learn that we don't need to actually have that all the time. But this is for us. Now it's golden rule. Whenever your function returns something, create an instance of it, return it at the beginning. Now between the two, those two lines, actually fill it in. So I want to see what is the filling of the bar is. So I'm going to say uh, printf uh, bar create, uh, what should I call it? Bar char. So it's going to tell me what the character is. And then I'm going to say scanf percent %c. And what I'm going to get? Into what? I'm, I'm getting a character. Where should I put it now? Into br dot filling. And because I am getting it, it has to be address of. There we go. So I got that, right? Now I'm going to say printf bar length. Now I want to get an integer full proof, so I'm going to put over here include my io.h. And I'm going to say, boy, what is a bar length? I'm going to say br.length is set to get int. And I want to make sure that it's not more than one line because one line is 80 characters, right? So I'm going to actually limit it. So I'm going to say get limited int. Oh, limited int. And I'm going to say between 1 and 79. That's how, I, how, how long I want it to be. OK? And ta-da, I return it. That's it. Now I have a get bar. OK? So. Now, instead of having this, uh, let me just, how do I do this? Control A, copy, let me pause it. We talked about the, the, the structures being passed through functions and coming back, and that makes no difference. 
with variables, it's exactly the same thing. A package being sent to a function and being returned, or a single variable being sent to a function and being returned. What The next thing that I want to mention is about having, again, going back to the things we talked about in last uh, uh, po previous part of the semester is header files. When I have something like this, I do not write the program like that. As you see, I have bar-related stuff over there. And I have my bar functions over there. And then I have my main. The proper way of writing this code is to actually create a header file. Call it bar.h. And then add the, so as I mentioned, an empty header file is a header file, header file with safeguards. So as soon as you write this, immediately you write what? If not defined, SICT underline bar underline H underline underline, and then you say define. You don't repeat, you copy it to make sure it's exactly the same. And then you say end if. Now, this is an empty header file. Header file doesn't have anything in it. You put all the stuff you want for header file in here. Now, I have a structure. I have a structure. I have draw bar. I have get bar. Am I using any I.O. in here? No. So take that thing out. You only have a header file included if immediately you have something over there that needs that header file. Otherwise, you never include a header file inside another header file. That's hidden logic. That's making people include something where they don't know they are including it. So unless you have to do it. Okay, so that's, these are the things that I have bar-related bar stuff that I have. Now I save them. Now I come back over here. In here, I'm, I don't need these anymore. I don't need these two. I don't need this one. But instead, I'm going to say what? Include bar.h. And now I'm going to go back to my program, and I'm going to add to my source files bar.c, which is a good idea to include bar.header file because it has all the functions. Of course, I have IO, so I need these two over here. So I'll, I'll add my IO stuff to my bar.h. Remember. Custom make header files always come after library header files. Don't put beforehand. Don't ask me why. It may not cause any problem, but don't do it. It's good for your health. Don't do it. Okay? So that's that. Now I'm going to actually get the source code of all bar-related stuff and put them right over here. So take that out. Put it in bar.c. Now I have a nice sound design structure. I have, as you see, the number of files keep growing, although my program is very small. I had a little I.O., so I'm using my I.O.C. and my I.O.H. and my I.O.H. because of that. My program is supposed to draw bars, that PRG.C, which if I look at it, it's only a few lines of code, and that actually shows what the, the whole thing is. And wait a minute, do I use any inc standard input output here no so this is this is not needed right i'm saying struct bar struct abc bar is abc that has no reason to be there i'm just going to call another draw bar to to in here i'm going to say abc just to show that they are the same okay so now this function, this shows that I have a couple of structures for, for bar, and I'm getting a bar, then I'm drawing the first one, assigning and drawing the next one. So it essentially shows what it's doing. If you want to know details of how a bar is drawn, you go to bar.c and look at the source code for that. You don't need to know how a bar is drawn. All you need to do for the bar to be drawn. And that's how everything works in programming. When you have written printf, you are learned how printf works. None of you knows how printf works. You know how to call it, and that's enough. 
none of you knows how SCANF works. You just use it, you know how to call it, which is perfectly okay. Okay? So it is okay to forget the code you have written as long as you know that you have written it. That's actually good. Okay? It clears your brain. Okay? That's how programming are done. You write a function, you make sure it works, and you forget about it. All you need to know that it exists, that you can reuse it, and that's all. I don't need to know how my get int works. It works. I tried it, it works. All right? So that's that. Structures are always 99.99% .99 of the time they are in header files because different files need to know what the blueprint of the structure is. Therefore, it's being, include, it's, it's being uh, uh, put in a header file. And that's that. Any questions down to here? If I run this, I just want to run it to make sure that it runs before I go to the next step. There you go. Yeah, it works. I'm not going to run it, but it, it is okay. Uh, here it is. It works. Just going to close it, come back over here. And now we're going to talk about pointers and functions, not arrays and functions. First, pointers and functions, and then we're going to talk about arrays as a side effect of pointers. Okay? We talked about, we reviewed the pointers at the beginning of the thing. So in here, I'm going to say, I'm going to call this 0, 4, and I'm going to call it bar main. So this is the main for bar. So if you're running it, as soon as you look at the main, the includes actually tell you what you need to have in your program to run this. So if you compile this on Linux, how do you compile it? You compile it like this. GCC, you can put dash wall because we are doing it all the time. Then you have to say uh, bar main dot C, my IO dot C, and bar dot C. And then you hit enter. That's how you compile it because it has to compile all the files. You don't need to do that in Visual Studio because you put it in the solution. So the compiler knows those are the files it's supposed to compile. In a command line, you don't, so you put them all. Okay? Yes. Uh, uh, view all warnings. Yes. So it means oh, warning all. All the warnings are going to be. So compiler will stop if you have warnings. Okay? For some reason, there is this <coughs> assumption that it's cool or professional to have programs that have warnings. They say, like I remember actually a student saying to others, there is no professional program that doesn't have a warning. <laughs> no, it means just you're sloppy, OK? You don't do that. Warnings are usually means, be careful, this program is running now. Three weeks from now, it's going to shoot you in the foot. OK? And then, and you don't want that. Because any program that you write, believe me, you are responsible for it. If your program crashes four weeks from now, they're going to come back to you. And then, four weeks from now, you will not remember what the heck did you do in your program. And you're going to be in trouble fixing it. So. Warnings, no warnings, bad thing, okay? All right. Add one is a function that I'm writing. And I'm putting over here integer val, okay? What does add, val, add one do? I'm going to say void add one integer val value let's call it value just to be different actually that should be value this one should be val <clears throat> okay now in here what i'm going to say i'm going to say value is set to value plus one that's all i'm doing okay not value val somebody remind me how my okay Are we okay with this? Now I'm going to write a program over here. I'm going to say int 
uh, variable is set to 24. Now I'm going to say add 1. I'm going to pass the va uh, variable to it. Now I'm going to say printf percent %d, and I'll go to new line, and I'm going to say var. And this is going to be on your quiz a week from now. What is the output of the following program? I forgot printf. Oh, that's the output of my program. But thank you very much. F. What is the output of the following program? No, so now you're going to tell me, it's going to tell you that you didn't include the standard input output. So include standard input output. Thank you for correcting me. I really, so you have to act like my compilers, pre-compilers. OK, what is the output of this program? You said 25. You fell for it. You said 24. You actually thought about it. It's 24, not 25. Think about it for a second. And I want you to really think about it. And I want you to really, I'm going to come and break that cell phone of yours, I'm telling you. Anyways, you have to really think about it. Am I recording it? Yes, I am. So, var 24. So I have 24 in the, val in the variable, right? Then I'm passing that var into add one function. So val, V-A-L, will receive whatever value I have in 24, in, in var, that is 24. So val inside add one becomes 24. Then val becomes val plus one. Therefore, val inside add one becomes 25. The function add one ends. The val variable goes to garbage. It's the end of its lifetime because its scope is over. The function is over. Goes back in into the function. Val remains the 24 it was. Okay? Now, one more time. I am very bad when it comes to names. Var and val. Val becomes var and val, val. So let's, <laughs> this is better like this. A is 24, okay? A is passed to function add 1. The content of A that is 24 goes to B. B becomes 24 in add 1. 1 will be added to the variable B. Remember, the arguments of a function are local variables inside that function. Therefore, B inside the function will be added by 1, and it becomes... 25. The function add 1 ends. The variable b dies. Goes back up. A. a remains 24 that it was before. Nothing has changed to it. And 24 is printed. Are we OK with this? So now I'm going to fix the name. Bad add 1. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? Now your attention, please. Now your attention, please. We're going to do magic now. Okay? Void add 1. In here, I'm passing integer pointer. And I'm calling it value pointer. Or address of variable. Are we okay with this? All right? That's a new version of void. It's called voidy. Okay. <laughs> void. Okay? Now I'm going to come over here and create that one. I'm going to say void add one integer pointer ptr. That's a pointer, right? Then I'm going to say target of ptr it's set to target of PTR plus 1. OK? All right? Somebody needs to teach me how to type. All right? Then in here, I'm going to say add 1 address of A. Now I'm going to repeat the print if I have done before. 
Now, what is the exact output of this program? Pardon me? What is the out exact output of this program? Lots of you didn't mark, lose mark because of this fact. What is the exact output of this program? 24, new line, 25, new line. OK? Don't say, oh, it's 25. I knew that. No, exact output, it means exactly what it prints. OK? Lots of you did the perfect answer for that array thingy, but did it from top to bottom, where it's supposed to be a line and a new line at the end. You lost the mark over there. Remember that. OK? So now, let's walk through this again. Forget about the first one. We have done it. Now, we are here in add one function, line 11. A is 24. We established that. We know that. Now, it passes the address of A, where A is in memory, not the value 24. We learned that previously in, at the beginning of the session today. So the address of A goes to add one. PTR will be passed by the address. So the address of A will be in PTR. So what is target of PTR? A. Therefore, I'm going to say target of PTR, that is A, will be set to target of PTR, that is A, plus 1. Therefore, A remotely will be added by 1. Then it comes out, PTR dies. The address of A goes to garbage. We don't care. Comes back into the function, and now A will be 25. Are we OK with this? Are we OK? So now if we run this beautiful program of mine again, this is going to be the output. OK? Go and walk through this on paper yourself. So what you do, you actually put this on a paper and walk through it. OK? So you can use this for many different things. I can have over here integer x set to 2, 3, 4, and go add 1, address of x, and printf x. And of course, the result will be, that's too small. And of course, the result will be the exact same thing. So it's going to be actually added by 1 now. So it becomes 2, 3, 5. Why? Because the address of x is passed to add 1. Therefore, PTR will hold the address of where x is in memory. Then it comes in here. Target of PTR, that is x, will be added by target of PTR, that is x plus 1. Therefore, 1 will be added to x. It comes out, add 1 ends, PTR goes away, goes to garbage. The address of x goes to garbage, we don't care. It's like you tear apart the envelope. The content inside is changed, that's what I wanted. Okay, so it changes, then it goes out, and it's done. Okay, that is why, ladies and gentlemen, you put an ampersand when you call scanf. Because scanf needs to know where the variable is so it can put something in it. Otherwise, it couldn't read. That's why you say scanf percent d ampersand a. Because you are passing the address of a, so it reads an integer and puts it in the target of that address. Therefore, your variable will get the value. And you don't need to do that for printf. Because in printf, you just print the value. OK? Having said that, we come to the next thing. Now I want to tell you a story. <laughs> when you actually create an array, what do you write? When you create an array, you write something like this. So let me just put this over here. I'm going to say functions and pointers, 0, 5, funks, and pointers. Now, when you write functions, first I'm going to tell you what the syntax is, and then I'm going to tell you what happens behind the scene. Okay? 
let's say I have series of stuff in, a, in an array and I want to print it. How do I do that? I pause. Back. So let's say I have series of integers that I want to print. I have 50 integers, 4 integers, 10 integers that I want to print. And these are all in an array. How do I pass these things to a function? How can I do that? The answer is pretty simple. So, so let's say I have int va vals. Let's say I have five of them. And I set them to 1, 4, 6, 12, whatever. Is it 5? It's not 6. Is it, It's 5, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Is it 6? OK, let's make it 5. All right? I want to print these. So what happens with the function to create a function is that the argument that you put for the function, you put exactly like an array, but you don't put, you don't put the number of the elements. So you are saying void, say call it print ints, OK? And then you say integer, um, let's call it array, and you put something like that in front of it. That's the syntax. That's how an array is passed into a function. But there is one thing that we need to know about functions that is extremely important. That is, C language is incapable of knowing what the length of an array is. It is absolutely impossible for it. You know that when you actually write a program, you need to know how many elements you have. If you, would <coughs> <coughs> if you pass through it, you're going to go to someone else's memory. So although this is something that I can't tell you why, but if you write int val 5, C language doesn't know that it's actually 5. There is no way that later on you can say what is the length of vals. You can't. You have to remember. OK? That's why you have defined values and things like that. You define something for a length. Because of that fact, print ints that wants to print the integers in the array will not know what is the size of the array that is coming in. So when I call that function, when I actually mention it like this, so if I have print arrays over here, and I have to say over here void print ints int array. In here, if I say integer i for i set to 0 and i less than what? I don't know. There is no way from ARR that I know what is the size. Then I say i plus plus. And in here, I, I say printf, let's say, percent d and a space, and I put ARR, i, and I'll go new line at the end. There is no way for me to know how far I have to go. C is incapable of it. Because of that fact, any time I am passing an array to a function, I need to tell to the function how long it is. Or I have to have a way to find out when the data ends. So if that's the case in here, I need to mention what is the size. There is no way around it. So in here, I have to actually put the size. And in here, mention, oh, sorry, in size. And in here, I have to mention size. OK? Now when I call the function, I can say prn ints vals. You don't put the index. And in here, you've got to put 5. And now it prints five of them. Now if I have another integer value, integer marks, let's say I have over there 10. Somebody count, please. <laughs> Are we OK? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Actually, it tells me. Good. So I have one extra. All right. So now if I want to print the marks, I can say print ints. In here, I'm passing marks. And I'm going to say 10 of them. OK? So the first time print, it's called 
Vals goes over here. R becomes, A-R-R becomes the new name. Again, I'll put bad name. I'm going to put over here, A over here. So A becomes the new name for that marks, okay? And it's going to print them all out. But I have to tell what is the size. And when I run this beautiful program of mine, everything's going to work perfectly. Are we okay with this? Any problem down to here? No questions, suggestions down to here? Now I want to show you something weird about arrays. Okay? Void add one. Int array. And of course I'm going to have a size. I am writing the exact same add one that I have written in the other program. So, but it's for an array. So I'm going to say add one. So let's call it add ones. <laughs> okay. I'm going to put an array. And in here I'm going to say int size. And in here I'm going to do the exact same thing that I have done over here, which is a loop. But inside that loop, instead of just instead of printing it, I'm gonna say a. Let's call this a. I plus plus. Okay. So in here, I'm gonna say I want to add one mark to everyone. Okay. So I'm gonna say add ones. Marks. Ten. And I'm gonna print the marks again. If it was like the previous one that I did not send the address and all those stuff, it shouldn't change, right? But when you take a look at it, you will see that actually everything is added by one. You understand that? Are we okay with this? Why? Because, because, unlike variables, in C language when you create an array, in C language when you create an array, and you say val5, what happens someplace in memory, it's going to occupy five integers, somewhere in memory. One, two, three, four and five integers. But it's not going to call it vals. What happens is that it goes someplace else in memory, whoops, it goes somewhere else in memory, creates a small little pointer, and calls that little guy over there actually vals. And that vals of yours is actually pointing to the beginning of this array. Okay? So what happens is that when you create an array in a function, you call it A, what happens is that someplace else in memory, it is going to actually create another pointer called A, And when you pass marks or vowels to that, to that pointer, the address inside vowels goes into A. Therefore, A will point to the same place too. And when you change the values of A, you're actually changing the values of target. It's like a snake with two heads. So essentially, you are saying, I have, a I have an array that has 10 elements, right? The name is marks. In add ones, I have an array called A that doesn't have any body. It doesn't have any array. It's just name of an array. Now, when the function is called, 
A actually gets the address that is inside marks. Therefore, it's going to actually point to that. And when you change the target, when you change the target, the array is changed. That is what happens behind the scene. For your information, to memorize it, when arrays are passed to functions, you change the value, the values change. You don't need to pass an address because they are address by nature. Regular variables, when they are passed to functions, they won't change. That's why when you create a function, that's why when you create a function that its intention is not to change the content, you have to make sure you put a const in front of it, just to remind yourself. And make sure compiler forbid you to change the values. When you are passing an array to a function, if the logic says, I just want to print, I don't want to do anything else. OK? Are we OK with this? All right. That was it. So we have to have that const up here, too. And then we are done. Because we are introducing it that way. There you go. Now we have the thing written, and that's arrays and functions. Very simple and straightforward. We're going to work on it more. Remember, tomorrow you have a quiz on functions only. No arrays, no structures, just functions. All right? Have yourself a beautiful day, and I will see you soon.